It's good to see you. Welcome to Villarica First Methodist Church. We are glad that you are here. Thank you for being here this morning and for joining us online. Hello, hello. A couple of announcements that we want you to be aware of, uh, and I'm gonna, we're just going to jump right to it. We've got uh, a cool little video that we want to show you uh, that's highlighting a very important ministry that is super, super significant. Uh, and so if you will, uh, watch this little clip, and then Miss Heather Shedd will follow up uh, with that, and then we've got an announcement from Scott Swafford. So if you would, look to the screens. That help heal from the pain of grief. The Grief Share video seminars, workbook exercises, and small group discussions give participants encouragement, useful advice, and hope. The Grief Share videos are, are excellent. The video strengthened me. It's a freeing kind of thing to be able to talk about your loss. My workbook helped me to unravel the feelings I was going through. If you know people in your church or community who are grieving the death of a loved one, tell them about Grief Share or visit a Grief Share group yourself to heal from the pain of your grief. There was such a void until I got into Grief Share. I never really healed down deep until I came to Grief Share. Grief Share brought me out of my sadness. Begin your journey from mourning to joy at Grief Share. Good morning. There it goes. Good morning, church family. So good to see you guys. I've seen some of you part of the time, not all of you all the time, but I've missed y'all so much. Um, and I was wanting to get Grief Share started back up again. This will be our third go around. Um, COVID made us go on Zoom for the first two, but um, the first two groups were very successful. I got a lot of great feedback from it. Um, Jan McDaniel is my partner in this, and um, I, I couldn't do it without her. So um, we will be starting Grief Share up on Thursday, um, August the 12th. And we are going to have it during the daytime this time for you, those of you that love to drive during the day. So it'll be from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. starting up on August the 12th. And we would love to see you. And if you're not grieving, I bet you know that someone that is. So um, if, if you would like to give them this information, I have these pamphlets sporadically placed throughout the sanctuary on the, in the pockets. So you can grab one. It's got our schedule inside. It's got my contact information inside. And it's also got a place where you can go online to register if you want to. If you don't want to do the technical, technological part of that, that is totally okay. I can sign you up. So um, just um, be in touch with me if you think this would help you out. And give this information to others um, who you think might need it. And also, after the 9 o'clock service, I will be out in the foyer. If anybody has any questions, I do have some workbooks on me if you would like to go ahead and get a workbook. Um, so thank you so much for your time. One of the things that's important about Grief Share is we know that when you go through loss, you're vulnerable. But the point of Grief Share is to be vulnerable with others. And so it's the with part that makes the difference in the grief. Why? Because you're vulnerable with others, you're doing what? You're sharing. So it tells us in Galatians, bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. What is the law of Christ? But to love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and what? Love your neighbor as yourself. And that's part of the loving, loving your neighbor as yourself and walking with each other and bearing one another's burdens because grief is just such a, sorry for almost the pun, but unbearable right uh, experience and so we're asking you take a leap be vulnerable with others and then share in the healing process that comes from being together and processing these things so thank you so much uh, and heather for you for jan we are so appreciative but also praying for you uh, as you share your vulnerabilities and lead others uh, towards uh, a much happier and much more healing experience so thank you uh Scott Swafford has a good, good announcement. It's going to be a good week, isn't it, Scott? Yes, it We're is. excited about yes, it. it is. I'm preaching this morning. I'm just talking, okay? Uh, 
Man, that's thank you, Heather. That's that's perfect timing. Vulnerable. When you're vulnerable, you need to pray. And if you know people who are vulnerable and are suffering, you need to pray with them. And we are here. Uh, Wednesday night, 6.30, right here, a prayer meeting. Good music, good message, good prayer time, and then communion at the end. Hope, that, hope and pray that all of you will consider coming and being a part of that, praying with one another, and uh, let's just get this. We, we, this, has been in, this has been now six, almost six months of planning. And I, I would love to tell you I'm not still a little nervous about the timing and everything, but uh, that's okay. Being a football coach, I was always nervous before we kicked off. So we're going to kick that thing off at 6.30 Wednesday night, and we're going to pray that I've called the correct place. <laughs> and uh, hope you'll be there with us and look forward to seeing each and every one of you. Okay? And then uh, lastly, right now, thank you, Coach. Uh, Rick was able to take a, what, a, a quick vacation, quick trip, whatever. I don't think he's taken time off and... Did, oh, sh- sh- anyway, but no. So Rick, Rick, <laughs> Rick's going to be back. He, 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 we said go. And so he took an opportunity to, to be away this Sunday, and we celebrate that for him. So thank you, thank you, Miss Sarah, for being here this morning and just for blessing our service and then prayers for you as you turn around and do another service at Concord at 11 o'clock. So we just appreciate that. Will you welcome Miss Sarah this morning and thank her for sharing her gifts. Thank you. Why don't we stand this morning, say hello to one another, and pass the peace. All right, as, you, uh, as you're seated, I've got just a couple more things that I left off, and I'm so sorry about that. Uh, we have today a, a parent meeting, is that correct, Miss Jess? Yes. Yes, following, uh, the fo- following the 11 o'clock service. Prayer partners for the Wednesday night event um, are going to meet after service today as well, just in preparation for that Wednesday night. And then today is the last day that we're collecting Things for Bay Springs. It's from Katie's awesome sheet that says, uh, bring all the things for Bay Springs. And so, Katie, any special instructions as we look at today, just sort of being that last day? Um, If you didn't bring anything but you still would like to participate, please feel free to put a check in the um, offering. Just mark it, Bay Springs Mission or something on the check. And otherwise, there will be things throughout the school year um, because we are going to partner with them this year. So just... um, if you didn't, if you weren't able to participate this time, just please pray for us and our students and our staff as we um, start back on Tuesday with students. So just pray for our year and our kids and, and just pray that our church can bless them because they need it desperately. So thank you guys already for what y'all have done. That's awesome. Anything else on children's? Wednesday the 25th, just put it on the calendar. There's a pool party for the children's ministry. That's going to be a whole lot of fun. You'll see more information coming about that soon. All right, we're going to turn it over to the choir now this morning. Here we go. Will you bow with me as we begin our worship? Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for the opportunity to worship together. Lord, bless the music, bless the singing, bless the prayers, Lord. Here we are to worship you. And so come, Holy Spirit, and be with us as we have this time. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
am so glad that Jesus loves even me. Let's all stand if you would. Let's sing the Lily of the Valley. If you remain standing as we affirm our faith together with one heart, mind, and with one voice this morning, let us affirm the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we turn now, you can flip over from your order over towards the prayer updates. Uh, you'll see the names that are listed there, uh, several updates. Uh, continue to pray for Ann Offit, who has been in uh, the hospital, and she's, they're trying to work through uh, some issues that she's having. Uh, Joshua Smith is on life support, a friend of the Jeffers family. Uh, he's in his 40s on life support from uh, COVID, from the new variant, and so uh, Please remember Joshua Smith, Ricky Jones, continuing to uh, remember him and um, all that he uh, has been going through uh, for um, uh, the Shot Wolves. You've got uh, the Clark family who we've continued to pray for and, and Bill for your sister, for things that have been happening with her, 
Uh, just, uh, I know there's been a lot on both sides for y'all there. Uh, and then others of you who are represented here, what updates or uh, new requests do we have this morning? And praises, what praises do we have to lift up? Anyone this morning? Yep. Yes, sir. Uh, I continue to praise the Lord that the uh, attacks I was receiving are no longer ever since that procedure I had. So wow. I praise the Lord for that. And I have a request that uh, my dentist, Don Harvey, uh, she has a practice here in Villarica. Uh, she had to go to the hospital the other day and uh, they kept her for some testing. I don't know what's going on, but uh, just pray for her. For Don. Others this morning. Yes, Neil. There's a coworker of mine, her name's Anna. Her, uh, both of her parents are she's going through just elderly issues with both of them. They're both having issues. And, and she's really feeling torn apart. So. For Anna and the care of her parents and all they're going through. Yep. Yes, sir. Yep, Miss Sharon. Praise for good test results. That's wonderful, Ms. Sharon. Thank you so much. We celebrate that with you. Big praise. Uh, Matt Fowler will be leaving after service. He and Miss Katie, they're going uh, as he has a uh, cousin, niece? His little cousin's getting baptized at, at, uh, at, their, uh, at uh, the family church there that they attend uh, in Bremen. That's right. And so just praises for that, for a, a young one coming to Christ. Beautiful. All right, anyone else? All right, if you'll take this minute, and let's now go before the Lord in prayer. And so, Father, we come to you this morning asking that you would indeed, Lord, hear our prayers. The names that are listed here are an expression of our hearts, our concerns. And we pray, Lord, that you will come alongside us as you so faithfully do. But in a way, Lord, that we would feel and know your presence as we pray and lift up on others' behalf. As we lift up our own concerns for ourselves, those unspoken things for many of us, Lord. And for those that we pray for, we ask that they would have a strong and moving sense, Lord, of your presence as you come near to them. God, if we can contribute to their faith and to their healing by loving on them and being by their side, then raise us up in various ways to be there for them. And may they know, Lord, that they are not alone. It takes us all, Lord, your village, your community, your church. And so may we truly be the church in our care for others as we watch over one another in love. And so, God, may your love abound, especially in each and every one of these situations and many more. We give you praise this morning for the things that have brought joy to our hearts, that put smiles on our faces, those things that increase our faith. We're thankful this morning, Lord, for George's procedure, for how it has helped him so much. For the young one who has come to Jesus, who has professed her faith and is now being baptized, Lord, and we celebrate with Matt and family as they go to be with them, being a part of that child's yes. And so, Lord, what a great and wonderful thing. We think about our youth this morning who have been rafting and traveling, and what a grateful th heart we have, Lord, that they can go and to build the relationships that they do together. And may these relationships and these memories, Lord, may they be things that drive them closer and closer to you, God, as they see the goodness that comes from your church. For our young people, Lord, for our children, we pray, Lord, as they are coming back together for school and for children's ministry and youth ministry, we just ask that your spirit, Lord, would continue to instruct our hearts, to get up underneath our burdens, and Lord, reveal your joy to us. And God, take us into this new year with expectation, Lord, of learning, yes, but of growing more than anything else. God, for the, all that's going on with the pandemic and with the rise of COVID and the new variant, Lord, we ask that you would be so present in the, in the fight against these things. And may we have that strong sense of you, Lord, being with us as we try to make sense of what needs to be done and is being done. God, save us from the confusion and the chaos and help us to 
love one another through all of this. We give you thanks, Lord, for the ways in which you continue to care for us. For our world and for our country, for our state and for our city, for our sweet church, Lord. We pray wisdom and guidance. May we come to you in all things. And thank you, Lord, for the brave men and women who make it possible for us to enjoy the lives we do, to worship the way that we do. We are blessed, Lord, to have the freedoms that we have. May we protect them and honor them and respect them above all. And so, God, here we are, worshiping you today, praying for the other churches who are gathered together, lifting up the name of Jesus Christ. Bless their services. And bless us, Lord, as we come before you now, praying in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, as we enter into our time of worship through giving, again, thank you so much for the ways you continue to remember the church, especially the ways that you have provided. As I looked last week at backpacks and school supplies, uh, the things that we've been gathering together for Bay Springs, and I looked out there and saw all of these notebooks and folders and It's just amazing what it is that we do when we consider the needs of others over and above our own. When we look to those needs and say, here. And when we do that, people realize their value. Do all that you can to remind people of their sacred worth in the eyes of God. Do what you can to serve each other. And it's a joy to be able to do that through the church and the ways that we give. So thank you. Thank you for your generosity. Let's now take a moment to offer our tithes and offerings.
God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the many blessings that you've bestowed upon us. Father, we ask that you take this portion that we are giving back and you would allow us to use it for the betterment of your kingdom always. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Sweet by and by.
the children will come forward for the children's moment. Who we got this morning? Y'all come right here. Go right there. There we go. We got a few in here. All right. Well, good morning. Good morning. Good to see you guys. I, I got a question for you. Raise your hand if you like to play games with friends and family. Yeah? You ever heard, raise your hand if you ever heard of the game Hide and Seek. Oh, yeah, 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 that's a good one. Now, there's a different kind of hide-and-seek called sardines. Raise your hand if you've ever heard of the game sardines. Okay, let me tell you what it is. The game sardines, like in hide-and-seek, everybody goes and hides, right? And one person goes out and tries to find the people who are hiding. In sardines, it's the opposite. One person goes and hides, and everybody else has to go and find the one person. And when you find them, you got to be real quiet, and wherever they're hiding, you got to stay with them because you found them, and so you stay with them. And all of a sudden, you start looking around, and you go, Whoa, wait a minute, where's my friends? I've been walking around, I've been looking for so-and-so, and I can't find them. And next thing you know, you start realizing, uh-oh, everybody else has found the person who was hiding. And when I was a kid, some kids were really good at hiding. And you'd get so tired of walking around and sneaking around and trying to find them, it was too hard. And you'd go, oh, I give up. And you'd quit playing. And then your friends would realize that you weren't looking anymore, and they'd come running out of the hiding spot. And they'd say, hey, why'd you give up? Why'd you quit looking? We were right here. You just had to keep looking. And they try to encourage. And they try to say, hey, look a little harder. The grown-ups are going to hear a scripture today about looking for and seeking after God and about how it's so important that we keep looking and keep looking. But God also says that if you'll look with all your strength, go like this, make muscles. If you'll look with all of your strength, guess what? God says, if you'll look with all your strength, you'll find me. In other words, he's not going to hide in a really, really, really hard place where you're going to go, oh, I give up. He says that if you'll look and you'll look hard, you'll find me. And that tells us that God wants us to find him, doesn't it? He does. Because there's so much goodness to have if we find God and we get to be together. So it's great that God wants to be found and that he's not going to look, he's he's not going to hide too hard for you to look for him. That's pretty cool. Put your hands together and let's say a prayer together. Repeat after me and we'll get ready for children's church. Here we go. Lord Jesus, we are thankful that when you hide, you're easy to find. May we always look real hard, always knowing that you're right there. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so we don't have Children's Church because it's a communion Sunday. So turn around and head back to your parents. We're going to have our message time, and then we get to have communion. And if you would this morning, if you'll stand for the reading of God's Word. From the book of Ecclesiastes, or Ecclesiastes, I'm sorry. (laughs) I did a funeral yesterday, and it was out of Ecclesiastes, but it has a whole lot to do with what it means to be together. So I think my brain's in about five places right now. The scripture this morning is from Jeremiah chapter 29. Jeremiah 29, uh, starting with the 12th verse and going on just through verse 13. Whether you have your Bibles or you see it there on the screen, Jeremiah 29, starting with the 12th verse, hear the word of the Lord. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me and I will hear you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Well, there's a unique opportunity today for us to do a couple things at the same time. And I've I've gone a little long uh, the last few weeks, and so I'll try to keep this short, especially because our focus today is quite definitely um, Holy Communion. But we have a vision team in the church, and you know that much better than I do. The vision team started meeting a couple of years ago. 
And as they were putting together information and collecting that information from you, you were able to sit down and be a part of sweet talks and around the table and church chat. And as you did that, the vision team was taking the information that you were able to provide and they were putting it together in such a way that we would be able to see very clearly what the values of our church really and truly are and then how those values would determine the direction that the church would go. Well, after receiving a bunch of that information and then beginning to crunch that data, there was all sorts of things that came about, neat charts and stuff. Carol knows what I'm talking about. She's already grinning. We've got a cool little chart that you're going to get soon. We want to put these things out, and we want to, to see your reaction to some of this stuff, and we're still collecting data. But there's lots of things that we want to put together in order to show you, but we found that it might be easier to both talk about that data and at the same time present it to you in the form of a series of sermons, just three weeks, where we walk out what we believe are the core values of our church based off what you told this church and its vision team just a couple of years ago. And so we couldn't have ever imagined there would be a, a, such a thing as a pandemic. We usually hear about that in movies, and now we're survivors. We're still battling it in many ways, and it's become a vocabulary word of ours, not something that seems strange or off, but something that's now very regular. And this church has been known for quite some time for worship and education and mission. But after everything that came back from you, as they prepared to put everything together, they were excited to finally get to a point when a new preacher came in and, and they said, we need to get this together and we want to push this out. And when the pandemic hit, it just kind of hit the pause button. And so through prayer and through saying, we've got to get this out to the church, we want to present to you today an emphasis that encapsulates the heart of our church. And I'm so proud of the vision team for doing what they have done. And I believe that it's the Holy Spirit who's allowed me to be able to come in and, and connect to that. That doesn't always happen. When the leadership changes and something you know, is different and then you have to walk in on something and yet at the same time I've walked in to a beautiful emphasis and I'm very grateful and I want everyone to hear that because all it did was confirm something I already knew which is the heart of this church knows what it wants. And so this morning you'll see up there that instead of worship, education, and mission, which are all a part of all of this, all of this is born out of that beautiful expression, we look now to seek, share, and serve. Seek, share, and serve. There on your bulletin, if you'll look, you'll see the scriptures that go along with that. I hope they're not too small. I didn't look to see. They are very small. But Jeremiah 29, 11 for seek, and Matthew 4, 19 and 20 for share, and 1 Peter 4, 10 for serve. And we'll talk about those things over the next few weeks. But what we want to do this morning is talk about Jeremiah 29, 12 and 13 and have that emphasis today from the text. I said we get to do a couple of things. One is talk about this as an emphasis for our church, which we're doing. But now let's dive into the Word of God and see what that means. What does it mean for us to seek, and how does that bear direction for our church? When I read the passage just a second ago, you saw Jeremiah looking to the people who are in exile. The people had been taken away from their homes, and God relays to them through the prophet Jeremiah over and over again that the calamity they're experiencing right now is a product of their sinfulness and from the distance that they have put between themselves and God. God's not the one who puts the distance between us. He's always drawing us closer in. He's pulling us and tugging us and making way and roads and, and streams in the desert. And I mean, this is God. This is the one who's chasing and he's seeking after us. But the people had moved away from God. Their hearts were far from God. And judgment came upon them, and they go from where they are in Judah and get taken there to Babylon. Ooh, Babylon. One of the worst enemies. The ones who really knew how to stick it to the people of God. The ones who worshipped Yahweh. 
the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And so the people are thinking, we're not in our homeland anymore. We don't know anything that's going on. And they look to this big, huge pagan world and think, what are we going to do? Because we're not associated with our temple right now, we can't worship God. And there's this huge despair. And Jeremiah speaks into their situation, and he says to them a verse that many of you have heard many, many times. And that's Jeremiah 29, 11. And Jeremiah 29, 11 says to us, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. Now he's saying that to them because they're in despair, and they think, we got to get out of this situation. And they had some false prophets rise up and say, oh, this is going to be a quick turnaround. We're going to get in here, we're going to get out of here, and it's going to be fine. And Jeremiah is saying to them, if you read the larger story, he's saying, you're going to be here a whole lot longer than you thought. And that's such a troubling thing because they don't feel like they can truly worship, they can truly live, they can't truly be alive unless they get to go back home. And all of a sudden, Jeremiah, with the word of God in his heart, speaks the word and contradicts the false prophets who were trying to just build up their racket. And he says, you're going to be here in Babylon a whole lot longer than you think. But here's what you need to know. God has a plan for your life. And the will of God is that you would be near him and he be near to you no matter where you are. And the people before this are thinking, now how could that ever be? And now here it is, the prophet of God speaking into their lives and telling them, guess what? You may be in exile. And your exile may be a result of your own bad deeds and sin. And yet, even though you're sinful, I love you. I love you. And I have a plan for you. And so here comes, that's not even the real good news. Hearing that there's a plan kind of makes you go, oh, but the real good news comes in 12 and 13, just as you heard. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will hear you. How can that happen if we are in exile? How can that happen if we're not in our church or able to go to church? How can that happen? Because I will be with you. You'll pray to me, and I will come. And be there with you and I will hear you. And then the best of it all, 13, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Their hearts were far from God and they had done everything but give God their hearts. They'd given God their scraps, their leftovers. He was an afterthought. He wasn't a priority in their life. And because of that, what ends up happening? But they end up in exile. They're carried off by someone else. But that's because they were carried off by worship of something else. First, their hearts were carried off, which then then led to they themselves being carried off. And that's how it starts, isn't it? With our minds and with our hearts being carried off because God is not the first and the foremost. We haven't sought the kingdom of God first. We sought something else. And the moment we seek something else, our hearts, minds are carried off. And then they as a people carried off into exile. And so God is saying, sort of twisting this around now just with different language. He's saying, if you will turn your heart back to me. Give me your heart again. Make me your focus. And you will see because I will be there with you. God is telling them that in their exile he can still be found by them so that they must seek them. In the midst of their idolatry, in the midst of their ruin, God is still accessible if they'll just set their face and their heart toward him. In other words, and we've heard this before, his grace is made available to them. Therefore, they must make their hearts and lives available to him. He's made himself available. They must make themselves available. Exile's not going to stop the love of God from reaching out and being there. Even sin itself, this is essentially what Jeremiah is saying, even in your sin, even in your exile, I still seek to be with you. I want you with me. I've made myself available to you wherever you are. Make yourself available to me. 
so that we may enjoy the relationship that comes, the fullness that there is to find, the joy that does certainly come from celebrating a relationship with the one true God. How beautiful it is. Because when we do that, when we seek Him fully, that seeking and worship, it will shape us and connect us to God and His will and purpose for us. Because that's what worship does. It shapes us. If they'll return to worship, even in exile, even far away, some of you who are watching online and you feel like you can't come back right now, we respect that and we love you and we miss you and we're praying for you and we know you're praying for us. But no, even for those of you who might not be here this morning, God is with you right where you are. And he seeks to be with you if you will seek him first and foremost. And so worship is what God is looking for. And then in that worship, we're shaped. He knows that the longer they spend in exile, idolatry becomes an even bigger issue. And so even where they are far away, he is now grabbing them and gripping them telling them about His presence and saying, come, worship Me. I will be here with you. And He is shaping them. And you know why? So that when they leave exile and they come home, they're ready to live their best life back home all over again. You ever ever gone on vacation hoping that you were going to be better off and really you just spent all of your time spinning your wheels the whole time you were gone? And then you come back home and you're not really ready for anything that's back home and it's almost like, why did I even go away? I think I just made it worse. God doesn't want for you in the midst of your exile to feel like things are worse. He wants for you to be in preparation. He wants to shape you and mold you and help you wherever it is that you find yourself. Whatever sin you're sitting in, whatever foreign country your mind and your heart feel like they've been driven towards and you feel so far from God. He wants to enter into that space, that far away space, and shape you. So that when you come home, boy, you are home. And you're glad to be home. And you're productive and you're ready and you can do all the things. Right, Katie? All the things. I had a lady yesterday that I was catching up with who looked at me and she just said, Preacher, I have just been a bad Christian. Now, I wasn't ready for a confession moment. I just finished the funeral, and it, but she just kind of launched into it. And she started to talk about how she had not been to church. She started talking about the fact that she needed to get back to church. And I said, do you feel this conviction? And she said, yes, I do. And I said, well, give God that conviction. Give Him your heart. And allow Him to be with you where you are. And then you'll find out He's going to draw you back in. That's what this is. This is God reaching into where you're at and saying, come home. Ye who are weary, come home. Right? As the great hymn tells us. To seek God is to be shaped by God. To worship God is to be shaped by God. We said before, just a couple weeks ago, that ministry is born out of worship, right? Therefore, if we want to see growth in our faith, in our families, and in our fellowship, our church, right? Then we must seek God and engage in worship. We must seek. And so the big question for us to ask in this moment is, is, am I seeking? Am I seeking? Have I been using the excuse of being far away from God? Have I been using that excuse in my farness? To not worship. Because if you had, if, you, if, that's what, if that's been your practice, if that's been where you've been, then the shaping isn't taking place, is it? God seeks to be with you right where you're at. It doesn't matter how far away you think you are, where are you going to go that God is not? Job! No, excuse me, Jonah. Jonah, swallowed by the fish! How, where can I go that you are not? David says it. Jonah says it. And what does Jonah discover? That even in the depth of the sea, in the depth of the fish, even in the depth and the bottom of the pit itself, there is God. You may be in exile. And you may have feel like your failures 
your sin, your doubt, your fear, your anxiety, your grudge, your anger, your bitterness. You may feel like that is a godless place and that you are far from Him. God says to a people in exile who are very much far away, if you come and you come to me and you pray to me, I will listen. If you seek me with your whole heart, I will be found by you. As we come before the communion table this morning, here's the question. If you are not seeking God with your whole heart, what part is it? What part of your heart have you not offered up to Christ yet? If you seek me with your whole heart, what part are you holding back? That is what you give to God. That is what you offer at these altar rails as you come and kneel in just a moment. But before you do, what is missing in the all? What's keeping it from being all? Is it a sense of control? Is it a lack of control? What is it that stands between you and God today? Because this meal right here tells us, it tells us that no exile, no exile can keep you from God. Do not let whatever it is that is in your heart or on your mind today keep you from worshiping Him. Because through worship, He will shape you and mold you into what you must be in order to bring Him glory. And as a God who deserves glory, know that He's a God who seeks to share that glory. And that is what He does through this sacred meal right here. God sees you and says, I want to share the goodness and the greatness and the glory that is mine. I give it to you. I share it to you. You are worth it. You don't deserve it. But He has looked down on you, made in His image and beloved by Him, and said, but you're worth it to me. So this is God's way of coming close. Your chairs today May they represent your exile. And your coming and kneeling, or if we need to come to you this morning, we can come there. But may the altar rails for you be your homecoming. May it be your commitment to seek God, to worship God, so that He may shape you. Come and pray to Him. He'll hear you. He'll listen. But seek Him with your whole heart. And don't hold anything back. Amen? Will you pray with me? And so, Father, prepare our hearts as we partake of this meal. We are grateful this morning, Lord, for the opportunity we have. The opportunity to share in your glory. To share in your grace. You have aimed your heart toward us, God. And though we do not deserve to be those recipients, you have found us worthy through your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Son, Jesus, alone is the one who makes us able to receive. And that is because He has given of Himself. Freely He has laid down His life. And freely He takes it up again. Thank You, Jesus, that through this meal that looks at Your death, we find life and resurrection on the other side. Meet us, Lord. Meet us in our exile. Forgive us of our many sins. And it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. If you'll look to, this, to the screens for our liturgy this morning and let us now go into this time of bread and wine. Christ our Lord invites to His table all who love Him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, 
We confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. And the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through the prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of His suffering, death, and resurrection, You gave birth to Your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, He promised to be with us always in the power of Your Word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which He gave Himself up for us, He took bread, gave it to His disciples, broke the bread, gave it to His disciples, and He said, Take, eat, this is My body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you. He gave it to his disciples. And he said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. And make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by His blood. By Your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at His heavenly banquet through Your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in Your Holy Church. All honor and glory is Yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And so this morning what we'll do is uh, we'll kneel as we normally do. Thank you for entertaining our setup that we have here this morning. And so if I could have Danny come and and join me this morning. I've just, while we were praying, (laughs) I washed my hands. Danny has his, and he'll make sure that's ready to go. But we will invite you uh, to come. What we'll do is we'll start on the front row here this time, and we'll invite you from each side to just come and gather. It's not going to be too organized here. Come and take up a space, and we'll come around and serve you this morning. Will you now come as we receive the Lord in this way? Thank you, Danny. Let's start here. Good morning. 
And so look here. The altar representing the body and blood of Jesus Christ. It is the center of our faith. And so may Jesus Christ be your center no matter where you are as you leave this place today. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. you'll look here we are shaped by worship make sure you have that core understand that Jesus Christ sits at the center of all things and watch him shape you as you worship participate by seeking by praying in Jesus name amen May we as a church, may we seek. May we seek the will of God. We will know the will of God if we worship. Because only out of worship, only out of that place where we allow God to shape us, will we be close, hearing the heartbeat of God, knowing more of the mind of God, because of the drawing close. But when you feel far, take heart. Even in an exile, that sin or doubt or fear or sickness, even in an exile where you feel distant, God is close. And He says to us in the midst of our distance, Seek me. Come, pray to me. I will listen 
And I love this part. I will be found by you. Let's pray. And so God, we give you thanks for this opportunity of worship. For all of the songs and the music. For all of the prayers and the praise. For the proclamation. And most importantly, Lord, for your word. Continue to shape us. Through this holy communion, Lord, we ask that we would have a strong, overwhelming sense of the forgiveness of our sins. Meet us, Lord, wherever we are found. Oh, amazing grace that searches us out. May we worship you, Lord. May we seek you. We offer all these things to you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You are dismissed.